This is WWNY TV 7, Carthage Watertown. News 7, covering northern New York to keep you informed about the events that shape your world. The Late Report. Good evening. There is still no sign of a Florida man missing and presumed drowned in the Black River. Watertown firefighters again searched sections of the river today, but found no sign of the unidentified man, who is believed from Florida. He was last seen Thursday jumping into the river to avoid police. Police said the man was spotted breaking into parking meters behind the Howland department store with two others who were apprehended. This man, however, jumped into the icy waters off Newell Street. Police theorized the man was not aware of the dangers posed by the river when he jumped in. An early Christmas fire claimed the life of an elderly Potsdam man who was una unable to flee the burning structure. Today, fire investigators returned to the scene of the blaze in which 82-year-old Joseph Reagan Sr. was killed. They continued to sift through the rubble with the assistance of a small crane to try to determine how it was ignited. The firefighters arrived at the Main Street home at 3.30 Christmas morning to find it fully engulfed in flames. Several attempts to rescue Reagan were foiled by dense smoke and flames. He was eventually freed, but was dead on arrival at Canton Potsdam Hospital. Although the cause of the fire remains to be determined, arson is not suspected. A handful of firemen were threatened with, were treated for minor injuries while battling that fire. Late this afternoon, firemen from Cape Vincent were called to the trailer home of one of their comrades to extinguish a blaze that was apparently caused by an overturned Christmas candle. The Edward Bierman residence on Joseph Street in the village was extensively damaged. But according to Fire Chief James Place, quick thinking by the Bierman's two teenage children allowed all within the residence to escape. They, were awakened, they awakened their sleeping mother and evacuated the premises. There were no injuries. Blowing snow reduced the visibility to near zero in many parts of the North Country today. Not a lot of new snow fell during the day, but what we already had was being blown around by 25-plus mile-per-hour winds. The wind chill factor was well below zero, so exposed flesh could quickly become numb by the gusts. There were several fender benders as a result of conditions, but police say no one was seriously hurt in any of them. Mel Bussler will have a full weather report coming up. Niagara Mohawk is returning about $1.4 million back to customers. This according to Paul Joya, chairman of the Public Safety Commission. An audit found erroneously collected funds through the fuel adjustment charge. It doesn't amount to that much in a customer-by-customer -customer breakdown and was returned through the December adjustment charge. The West Carthage Housing Authority is now conducting a housing survey to determine the need for additional housing for the elderly. Ann Richter has details on that story. The West Carthage Housing Authority is investigating the need for a second senior citizen housing complex, one that would accommodate retired professionals who earn more than most senior citizens. This $1.5 million complex opened in June. 65 people, mostly elderly females, reside in Westside Terrace's 50 apartments. But a survey is being conducted in the towns of Wilna and Champion and in the villages of Carthage and West Carthage to determine if another complex is needed. Authority spokesman Jerry LaRock says what the survey is showing is that senior citizens with a more than modest income need a place to live. The income limit for couples at Westside Terrace is $8,700. For singles, it's just over $7,600. LaRock says because of federal guidelines, funding for a second complex would have to come from the Farmers Home Administration and not HUD, the agency which built Westside Terrace. FHA income guidelines for seniors are considerably higher. If the survey determines there is a need for additional housing, a new complex could be built within 12 to 6 months. Ann Richter, News 7. Now's the time to put you in motion. Now's the time for savings on selected car and truck options. Now's the time for option package savings on Omni and Charger. Now's the time to save up to $1,000 with Prospector truck packages. Now's the time because we could pass an Aries automatic transmission on to you at no extra charge. Now's the time. Your nearest Dodge deal is the place. We put people in motion. A holiday message from PNC Foods. Season's greetings from the Price Champion. 
My name is Larry Raisin from PNC Food Market. I am the 1984 National Truck Driving Rodeo Champion in the flatbed class. I have been a driver for PNC Food Markets for the past 12 years. At PNC, we always stress safety on the highways, and especially this time of year during the holidays. From all of us at PNC Food Markets, we wish everyone a safe and happy holiday. We do it all. Wearing a seatbelt is now the law in New York State, so practice getting into the seatbelt habit. New York's seatbelt law could save hundreds of lives each year. It might even save yours. So get into the seatbelt habit. Not just because it's the law. Israeli parliament member Mayer Kahani says he will appeal a new law which keeps him from entering an Arab villages within Israel without permission. Police stopped a U.S.-born rabbi today outside a Jewish town. He was to have spoken with Jewish women, he says, who have married Arabs. Kahani wants banished the two million Arabs living in Israel and territories occupied during the 1967 Middle East War. Tomorrow is the fifth anniversary of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And President Reagan noted it today by warning Moscow that the situation in the Asian nation remains a stumbling block to improve superpower relations. Meanwhile, Soviet occupation troops have gone on a state of alert. Western diplomats say security has been beefed up around the capital city of Kabul and other key government locations to guard against guerrilla attacks. Sources say patrols have been tightened around the Soviet embassy and the Afghan Ministry of Defense. They say also that rebel attacks usually occur around the anniversary date. Today, five years after Soviet forces marched into that Asian nation, a handful of protesters in Houston marched on City Hall. The group of 50 Afghan refugees said they wanted to draw attention to the situation in their homeland. They claim that there will soon be as many people dying from starvation in Afghanistan as there are now in Ethiopia. The demonstrators are also asking for moral and financial support for the Afghan rebels who are fighting the Soviet troops. In Washington, D.C., President Reagan said that the presence of the Soviet army in Afghanistan is standing in the way of peaceful east-west relations. Soviet Politburo member Mikhail Gorbachev is apparently being groomed as a successor to, to Chernyenko, and at the age of 53, he's the youngest man to have reached the highest level of Soviet power in many years. Diplomats believe he's the favorite because he, of all available candidates, has impressed the aging leaders as most likely to continue their policies. Yet the question marks about the internal workings of the Kremlin remain largely a mystery, as they were centuries before the arrival of the communists. Kremlin watchers say they will likely remain that way for many years to come. Well, it's tax time again, and the Internal Revenue Service wants to hear from some 94 million Americans soon, or at least by April 15th. The IRS began sending out federal income tax forms and instructions today, as it does each year the day after Christmas. About 39 million packets containing the short forms 1040A and the 11-line 1040 Easy form for single taxpayers will be mailed out. About 53 million of the 1040 long forms will be sent out. New York City police say they've made very little progress in their hunt for a gunman who wounded four black teenagers last weekend. The man fled after saying they tried to rob him on a, a subway train. The civil rights group CORE has offered to pay for the legal defense of the fugitives. Of the fugitive, one of the New York City's top lawyers has agreed to handle his defense if he's found. Authorities say the shooting has prompted more than 1,500 calls to police hotlines in support of the gunman. Perhaps. Telephone 6 started today, so don't just sit there. See your Toyota dealer. Because right now he's got a big inventory of 85 cars, trucks, and vans that he wants cleared out by year end. He's going all out to make sellathon deals. I sure he wants to give you more for your trade-in. Of course he wants to help with financing. Stop.
clock is moving fast. Move fast if you want to drive home your Toyota Celathon deal. Hurry! It's for three days only, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Dave Jones Sports Shop Brockville. A piggy bank buster of a boxing week sale. Nickels and dimes really count. Adult Russell Newell skis for just $180, and for a mere 10 cents extra, you'll get Muneri ski boots and Solomon 326 bindings. That's only one of the ski and ski wear piggy bank busters during the Boxing Week sale at Dave Jones Sports Shop in downtown Brockville. I'm Sheriff Al O'Neill, speaking on behalf of the Jefferson County DWI program. Drunk drivers continue to pose one of the most serious problems facing our country today. Drunk drivers are responsible for 50% of automobile fatalities. Don't drink and drive. By not drinking and driving, the life you save could be your own, your loved ones, or your friends. Don't take the chance. Enjoy the holidays. Remember, friends don't let friends drive drunk. Wanted two renegade pilots, a government agent and his assistant who walk softly but carry a big stick. Together, they make the most awesome flying arsenal of action and adventure ever to stalk the earth. Airwolf. Catch the action of Airwolf Saturday nights at 8 o'clock. Well, perhaps it was the frigid afternoon weather conditions, but very few youngsters were taking advantage of the Thompson Park Hill today. Watertown City Council agreed Monday to take down signs prohibiting sledding on the steep but popular park entrance hill. As yet, there is no si sign that says slide at your own risk that council asked to be put up. The city manager closed the hill last week because claims against the city by injured sledders have cost over $20,000. Two days ago, the council reversed that decision. These sledders are reportedly Florida residents who had not seen snow before. Doctors at Louisville's Humana Hospital Audubon have rescheduled Bill Schrader's shower session for tomorrow. Today, the famous artificial heart patient was to take his first shower since receiving his mechanical heart more than one month ago. But Schrader got tired after undergoing therapy. The shower is now uh, scheduled for tomorrow. And from Duluth, Minnesota, word of another variation on an American theme, the burger. This one with a prairie twist. Reporter Edie Tarbach has the details. One of the most popular New Year's resolutions is to lose weight. And a new way to cut calories is to switch from a regular hamburger to a buffalo burger. It'll taste pretty, pretty much like beef. It'll just be leaner and uh, slightly sweeter. But many people buy buffalo that can't eat beef because of allergies and because of cholesterol uh, problems. Buffalo meat is now available across the country, and because it's low in fat yet high in protein, it's quickly becoming the latest addition to gourmet cooking. Jerry Beck owns one of the largest buffalo meat companies. The product line already includes buffalo jerky, buffalo steaks, three types of salami, and of course, the buffalo burger, which he says is one of the best sellers. People seem to enjoy it after trying it. We had experienced last year in Jackson Hole where uh, at the bottom of the ski area, people started eating buffalo burgers in, in January, and by the end of the season, they were out selling beef burgers about two to one. You can buy buffalo meat directly from the factory in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It costs about a dollar more per pound than lean ground beef, but consider that along with the novelty of serving up an exotic fare, you'll be dishing out pure calories. In Duluth, Minnesota, E.D. Tarbach for CBS News. And along with your buffalo burgers, you might want to serve champagne. Champagne sales are skyrocketing during this year's holiday season. Local liquor store owners say there are several reasons why champagne is doing so well, particularly the more expensive varieties. Kathy Persick reports. Consumers seem more educated about champagnes, and younger people are buying what was once considered the drink of the idle rich. There is a certain snob appeal to champagne which can run from three or four dollars to hundreds and thousands of dollars per bottle. Who is buying the bubbly today? Everybody. Everybody. The kids. Kids are buying better champagnes this year, last year. They're going for Mums, Moet. Uh, we sell a lot of Dom Perignon this time of year, which normally we don't sell any at all. So just about all of it. Andres usually, as you can see, the floor stacking is just about empty right now. There's another reason why champagne and wine seem to be doing so well. The state's current drunk driving laws are encouraging people to partake of alcohol at home rather than in taverns, which they have to drive to and home from. People want to stay at home. They're afraid of the, the new laws and 
They don't want to pay the stiff fines, so they're definitely staying at home. Are you seeing an increase in your business because of that, do you yes. think? Yes, definitely. Uh, the champagne business has boomed quite a bit in the past four years. I think it's gone up more percentage-wise than any other liqueur, cordial, or, or wine. There is a lot of money in champagne. Liquor store markups run anywhere from 30 to 100 percent. Restaurant markups can rise as high as 300 percent. Kathy Persick, News 7, Watertown. Gifts have all been opened, and the thrill of Christmas presents is now a memory. But here's one present you'll never stop opening. A new front-wheel drive Oldsmobile. Now's the perfect time to wrap up a deal and save on an Olds Cutlass Sierra. Only at your Olds Action Team dealer. It's the present you never stop opening. Oh, and batteries are included, no assembly required. And we'll start off with sports now with a high school basketball tournament. Mel? That's right. Uh, up at Jefferson Community College, a little high school b-ball. The Chase Lincoln JCC High School Basketball Tournament got underway tonight. In the first game, Indian River beat Governor in an exciting contest, 61-59. to Jeff West played a strong game for Indian River, pouring in 15 points. This basket tied the game at 12 early. Dan Lamphere would nail 13. He would add a key three-pointer at the end of the game. That would be the difference. For Governor, Dennis Love led the attack with 14 points. Tom Scozafava helped out the Wildcat cause with 10. Mike Steria would help out Indian River, joining Weston Lamphere in double figures. He had 10. Final score, Indian River 61, Governor 59. The Warriors will play in the title game Friday night at 9 p.m. And Indian River will face IHC in that championship game. The Cavaliers defeated South Jeff 55 to 50. Randy Burnett led the winners with 18 points. Joe Bauer had 18 for the Spartans. In the NBA tonight, the New Jersey Nets down the Detroit Pistons 112 to 97. Let's take a look at the highlights. First off in the first quarter of play, Buck Williams will score for New Jersey underneath that tied things up at 14 apiece. The Pistons' Vinnie Johnson made it 27-23, New Jersey. Michael Ray Richardson for the Nets made it 47-32. John Long will score for Detroit from the outside. That made it 47-38, New Jersey. Michael Ray Richardson will score for the Nets. This one from outside and made it 57-45, Nets. Buck Williams. For two, that made it 74-59, New Jersey. The Pistons' Kelly Trapico will score on the fast break, 77-65 Nets. Michael Ray Richardson, though, will score at the other end, 81-65, New Jersey. New Jersey goes on to win final score, Nets 112, New Jersey 97. Plenty of action in the NBA tonight. There's the Nets score once again over the Pistons. Washington defeated Indiana 114-89. Jeff Malone had 25 points for the winners. Atlanta leads the Knicks 73-54, that's in the third quarter. Also in the third, Milwaukee 84, Houston 76. In the fourth quarter, it is Dallas 108, Los Angeles 98. In the second quarter, Denver leads San Antonio 53-46. to 
Utah over Kansas City, 65-63 there in the third quarter of play. In the second corner, Phoenix over Boston, 57-45. Just starting tonight on the coast, the Seattle Supersonics and the Los Angeles Lakers. The first annual Freedom Bowl is being held tonight out in Anaheim, California, between college football powers Iowa and Texas. Let's take a look at tonight's action. We have an update on this score. It is now just starting the fourth quarter. Iowa has now taken a 55-17 to 17 lead over Texas. That is an update on the score that you see right there. The 9-0 Georgetown Hoyas remain on top in this week's R.T. French college basketball poll for Eastern schools. Syracuse was in second place with Villanova third, St. John's fourth, and Boston College fifth. Nine games tonight in the National Hockey League. Hartford defeated New Jersey 5-3. It was Buffalo over Toronto 6-0. Pittsburgh nipped the Islanders 6-5. Detroit over the Rangers 5-2. Washington shut out Philadelphia 6-0 in the third period. It's all tied up two apiece between Chicago and St. Louis. Also in the third period, Minnesota is leading Winnipeg 2-0. In the second period, it is Edmonton 2, Calgary 1. And in the first period, no score between the Los Angeles Kings and the Vancouver Canucks. This is one of the busiest times of the season for local ski resorts. Let's take a look at the latest ski conditions. Snow Ridge has four inches of new snow on a four to six inch pack powder base. Whiteface has a groomed 10 to 16 inch pack powder base. Big Tupper has two inches of new snow on a zero to nine inch base. Dry Hill hopes with some overnight snow to open tomorrow. Both Killington and Stowe have loose granular surfaces. In Ontario, Calabogie has a pack powder surface on a 30 centimeter base. Alice Hill has a packed powder surface on a 10 centimeter base. And in the Quebec region, Volage has a machine groom powder surface on a 20 to 60 centimeter base. For three days only, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Dave Jones Sports Shop Brockville. A piggy bank buster of a boxing week sale. Nickels and dimes really count. Adult Russell Newell skis for just $180. And for a mere 10 sets extra, you'll get Muneri ski boots and Solomon 326 bindings. That's only one of the ski and ski wear piggy bank busters during the Boxing Week sale at Dave Jones Sports Shop in downtown Brockville. The fun, all the shows A to Z and the facts. What's behind what you see, TV guy? The whole world of TV. That's entertainment. The stars underneath all the glow and the news. From the people who know TV Guide, it's a fabulous show. So buy a TV Guide and read TV Guide. That's entertainment. It's a great time, the Nissan Truck Challenge. If you ever wanted a truck, it's a great time to buy. The challenge is on now at every Datsun dealer around. They challenge you to find a better truck value anywhere because every dealer has been challenged by Nissan to sell every truck before the end of the month, and they're going to do it. So if you want a deal, they want a deal. Name it. King cabs, four buys, long bed, sport truck. They're all up for grabs at the Nissan Truck Challenge. It's a great time. Be at your upstate Datsun dealers early for the best selection. The American Heart Association wants you to know the signals of heart attack. Pressure or pain in the middle of your chest lasting approximately two minutes or longer. The pain may spread through the chest and down the left arm. Pain in your neck or jaw or through the shoulders and down both arms. Sweating, nausea, or shortness of breath may also accompany these pains. If you experience any of these, don't take any chances. Get to your doctor immediately. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. It's a heck of a frigid night out there around the North Country tonight. You know, we, we wanted snow. We wanted a white Christmas, but this is ridiculous. You like those temperatures, huh? Hey, listen, the humidity's low, so you, you know, it's, it's hard to tell that the temperatures are that warm. Windy, too. Doesn't make sense, does it? Let's check around the state at the present time. We are talking partly cloudy skies. We do expect the clouds to roll in a little later on. 13 degrees in Buffalo right now, 14 in Rochester, 13 for Syracuse. Minus 10 up in Messina. 19 degrees in Albany, 31 New York City. Here in Watertown, we are at 4 degrees. Checking our stats for today, our high temperature made it up to 26. The low is our present temperature. Record high, 61 degrees in 1982. Record low, minus 24 in 1914. It is now 4 here in Watertown. 
The barometer is 30.76. It is falling. The humidity stands at 53%. The winds are out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. The low spot in the nation this morning, International Falls, Minnesota at minus 24 degrees. Extremely cold in the northern plains, mild in the deep southeast. Checking afternoon temperatures, a chilly day for the north. It was still mild in the southeast, especially southern Florida. The hot spot in the nation, Tampa, Florida, and that was at 85 degrees. Well, this high pressure system gave us some nice weather today, kind of cleared things out. Uh, we are suffering a little bit, though, with uh, no cloud cover tonight, a little bit of radiational cooling. It is uh, really getting rid of the uh, heat that we received during the day today, no cloud cover to keep that heat in. That high pressure system will begin to weaken a little bit, though, move on by. Behind it, a warm front out in the Midwest will start moving uh, to the eastern part of the country with a little bit of precipitation to it. Uh, temperatures will be on the rise over the next couple days, but you will also notice the increase in clouds, a possibility of some snow tonight, tomorrow. And then when the temperatures uh, continue to rise, you may also get some uh, freezing rain, some rain mixed in with that. Uh, it's going to be a mess. Hopefully, though, on Friday, high pressure will start to work in and uh, it should clear things out. Let's take a look at our forecast for tonight. We do expect things to be clear and cold, then clouding up later on with snow. The low, we should bottom out at about zero. Northeast winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. For tomorrow, cloudy with periods of snow, warmer, a high about 30. Southeast winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunrise at 738. The sunset will be at 432. Looking ahead, clearing tomorrow night, partly cloudy. Friday, the high 35 to 40. So you're going to notice uh, the temperature will be on the increase, and that will mean uh, rain or snow, a possibility for Saturday. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few cars that will have to be jumped tomorrow morning because of the low temperatures. Undoubtedly. But uh, they will be on the rise over the next couple of days. It seems Mother Nature still can't decide what to do. We're almost into January, and we're getting temperatures in the 40s. Yeah, yeah. We will by the end of the week. Uh, tonight, I don't think you have to worry about that, though. I don't think so. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. This week, buy country cane sugar for $1.59 in the five-pound bag, extra large eggs for 79 cents a dozen, and two heads of lettuce for a dollar, all at convenient food marts. It's your Ford dealer's Everything Goes sale. One final week to get year-end deals on a wide selection of new and used cars and trucks, from slightly used Granadas to brand new Tempos. Forget the sticker price. Forget the blue book. Everything goes for less. One last week to get top dollar trade-in allowances and easy financing. One final week to save with a sales tax deduction. Everything goes, everyone saves during your Quality Plus Ford dealers. Everything goes sale. But it all ends Monday. Unless everything's gone. Channel 7, and I'd like to wish everyone to have a nice Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And finally tonight, this, the ninth annual 10 most watchable men in the world list is out, and President Reagan is on that most eye-pleasing males list. So are actors Kirk Douglas and his actor son Michael, Australian actor Mel Gibson, and Michael Jackson's brother Jackie. Others on the list include David Hasselhoff, Dean Martin, Ed McMahon, quarterback Joe Montana, and TV game, game show host Chuck Woolery. Unfortunately, Mel Bustler was not on that list as it came out. That's the late report for now. News 7 joins you again tomorrow morning at 725. Until then, for Mel Bustler, I'm Chuck Plumpton. Good night.